So it's uh been a while since I uh sat down and did a One Piece chapter review. Now, a lot has happened. Like honestly, some of the craziest twists and reveals have happened in One Piece since the last time I reviewed it. And I think it's time I finally get back up onto the uh, horse and start, you know, talking about One Piece again. Because the latest chapter, the chapter that came out, you know, around Friday of last week, I was wanting to get this up earlier, but things happened. But it's better late than never. Here I am, right before the new chapter releases tomorrow. But yeah, I uh, I really wanted to talk about the chapter because it's um. There's so much that happened. There's so many ways the story can go. That I don't think anyone can really know what's going to happen next. That is just how beautifully crafted the latest chapter of One Piece was. And I kind of want to dive right into it, okay? So to get started, we get the results of the reverie. We find out what necessarily happened in that a week has passed since the beginning of the uh, reverie. It's over, everybody is going back home, and we get a lot of big news. One of the biggest factors you can take away from the reverie is that the Warlord system is effectively dead. That means that Fujitora got what he wants. He got his goal achieved. He achieved what he wanted, what he's talked about for a very long time. He managed to get it done. The Warlords are no more. And obviously, that's a, a pretty big deal, and I'm going to get into that. But there's other pieces of news that popped up within the chapter that has probably the entire One Piece community really just buzzing and wondering what is next, what is going on, what has happened. And so, let's kind of cover it. So, the pieces of news that we get throughout the chapter that's scattered is that there was a attempted murder, there was a fatality, the Warlord system is over, but also something happened in Alabasta. And then there's probably a lot more news that's going on that we're currently unaware of. So, let's look at the details here. Attempted assassination, or attempted murder, and then a murder. Who died and who almost died? That is, I think, the biggest question many are going to start wondering about because it obviously popped up in the newspaper and we saw a lot of images that make you speculate that probably a very important character died or almost died. And... So, who is it? Who are the possibilities? So, let's go to the beginning of the chapter. When you look at the beginning of the chapter, you see Garp start talking to King Neptune. It's like, I don't want you to fear the surface or humans, but something happened in Alabasta. And the way he talks about it, it kind of reeks of the fact that someone died. Something really bad happened. For him to say, don't fear the surface, it must mean that something really bad happened that would make Neptune scared. But here's the thing is that many might instantly assume maybe Vivi died, since it's been set for a while that she probably is going to die or have an attempted assassination because of Imu-sama. It makes sense that she would probably be the fatality. And that would be insane news if it was the case. Or, on the off chance, it could be Cobra. Cobra could have died, you know, Vivi's father. But personally, I don't believe... Vivi or Cobra was the attempted murder or murder because it just doesn't make sense. For someone so high up in, you know, the world government, like the top, top Imusama, I just don't think that if he was to initiate his plan or she or whoever, I, I don't believe that, you know, the assassination would ever be noticed. It would be just so undercover, no one would know what have happened, it, it would just have been a secret. That's, that, that's what I'm getting at. You know, Cypherpole would not be used at all because it would be so effective. That's the point I'm getting at. So I just don't believe VV died or Cobra. So the only reason why you would have someone like Garp tell King Neptune about don't fear the surface, don't fear humans, it must be something that Neptune would truly fear and understand, which I'll get into that in just a second. I know exactly what that potentially could be. Now, since it might not be Vivi or Cobra, who is the murderer? Who is the attempted murderer? So, going on throughout the chapter even further, you see to where 
we start to see more about Sabo. We don't get to see him within the chapter, we just see a bunch of our iconic characters that we met throughout the journey of One Piece start to talk about him. You see that a lot of people start to realize that Sabo's alive and they start crying, and when you also have it to where, you know, Luffy's, you know, foster mother also starts crying, and it starts to make you wonder what's going on, especially when you see the revolutionaries talking about Sabo, it makes you wonder, did Sabo die? Is he captured? What happened? And I'm just going to be honest here. I truly doubt Sabo died or is captured. And the reason why I say that is because of multiple reasons that just make a lot of sense. And it makes sense because Oda is a good writer. Number one, if Oda was to kill off Sabo right now or have Sabo captured by the world government, it would be a repeat of Ace. It would be an exact replica of what happened to Ace, Luffy's brother. And the reason why I say that is, is because as we know, most of the first half of One Piece did focus on Luffy trying to save his brother. And obviously we know what happened. It didn't work out in the end, and Luffy was unsuccessful. And Ace died, and his devil fruit lived on and passed on to Sabo, which was Luffy's other brother. And Sabo technically started to get introduced after Ace's death. So because of that, Sabo was introduced to be kind of like that fill-in role for Ace. But many started to say that Sabo was just an Ace 2.0. That's what many started to say within the community. And obviously, you can kind of see the similarities, especially after he got, you know, the same devil fruit that Ace had. So if Oda was to kill off Sabo or make him imprisoned, it would be a replica to what happened to Ace. I just, I doubt that is the case. I really do doubt it because... There, there's just no way he would repeat that. Oda is a better writer, and he would not repeat the same plot points he's already done in the past. I just don't think so. So, who is the murder and attempted murder? I don't think it's a celestial dragon either, and hear me out on this. When you think about what the public was talking about, it said briefly within the chapter from Viz's translation that the public was more interested in the warlord system being completely dismantled. And so, if that is the case, that means that no one relatively big of importance died. Because if, let's say, a Celestial Dragon died, then obviously that would be the talk of the town. Because Celestial Dragons are supposed to be literal gods. They are untouchable. You can't kill them. And so... It would make you think, like, obviously if one of them died, everybody would be talking about it, but nobody obviously was. So if that's the case, then I just don't think one of them died. I, I truly don't. Now, I know many might throw out the point and say, but obviously Cypherpole wanted to cover something up. They, they even infiltrated Big News, Big uh, Bird Boy, to actually stop him from posting some information. Now, the question is, what is it? Many might assume it could be the murder. If the murder is a celestial dragon, it would make sense why they would want to cover it up. But I truly doubt that. Because if it was a celestial dragon, like I said, the public would be talking about. So who is the one that died? And that is the major question. The only person that can come to mind that could have died could be Kuma. It had to be Kuma. It, it, it either had to be Kuma or it had to be someone from, you know, CP0, etc. It had to be someone of significance, but not too important to really get the public's attention off of, you know, the, the warlords. So, it's someone high up, but not too high up. But we still might really know this individual. Now, it's an off chance we might not know who the person is, but it's likely, you know, we do. And so... We don't really know who the person that died is. Now, when it comes to the attempted assassination slash murder, that could be a celestial dragon. But once again, I think the public would be talking about it. So I don't think that is it. So I believe it might be Sabo. Because when you think about our big bird boy, he doesn't really pick sides. He just picks what's interesting. He picks what sells papers. So at the end of the day, when he says attempted murder or assassination, he could have meant that one of the revolutionaries were over almost assassinated. And that could have meant that maybe Sabo almost died, which could explain the reaction of the individuals we saw throughout the chapter. The reason why the revolutionaries are all shocked is because Sabo was almost assassinated, potentially injured really badly, like maybe legs removed, etc. But he got out of there, but he's really injured. And the reason why the others are crying is because they just found out that Sabo is alive, but also incredibly injured, and that's why they're really upset. So there is a lot of ways to look at this. So, yeah. 
Now, another way, too, is to talk about what Cypherpole was trying to cover up. And since there was a lot of news coming in, this leads into the point I was talking about earlier on in this video when it comes to Alabasta. Alabasta. Think about its significance, its importance. Besides Vivi and Cobra and having an arc focused in the country, what secret does it hold? Something that the world government would not want anyone to know. That would be Pluton. As we know, a long time ago, Pluton is in Alabasta. We found out. We know that Pluton is somewhere hidden within Alabasta. Somewhere. We don't know where it's at, but it's somewhere. And the, the Poneglyph was to give the location of it. And so, my assumption is that the, what Cypherpole was trying to cover up, or the government was trying to cover up, was probably Pluton which would explain Blackbeard's reaction as well within the chapter, because he found out about it, and he wants to go there. Or the Ponyglyph, he wants to go there. Whatever the case may be, it's either a Ponyglyph that leads to Pluton, or it's Pluton, which could explain why Garp was talking about Alabasta in the first place, and why not to fear the surface, is because King Neptune obviously knows what Poseidon is, or who Poseidon is. It's his daughter, Shirahoshi. So, that's why. Because he realizes that Pluton is coming into existence, and it comes back, it reawakens, then his daughter would be the very individual that could be the one to counter it besides another Pluton. And as we know, Frankie is one that can make Pluton as well, since he had the blueprint, so he's obviously going to use those plans at one point or another in the story. So yeah, I do think that the secret they were trying to hide was something in Albastiv, which is probably Pluton, and that is why Garp was telling them not to be fearful of the surface or humans, because obviously humans, etc. created Pluton, so he doesn't want, the, you know, them to fear that, because Shira Hoshi would have to be, you know, getting involved. So, that's my assumption. So, once again, it leaves us back to the question, who died, who was the attempted assassination? Attempted assassination, like I said, potentially Sabo. Might have been a Celestial, just doubt it. And then you also have the murder, which... I believe is maybe Kuma. It's either Kuma, Bonnie, or it's someone that's important but not too important. Like, no one high up. So, that's my assumption. So, there's a lot more going on than just that within the chapter. There is also the events with the Warlords. Now that I've talked about the other two points, the Warlord system being completely dismantled, obviously, it's just ridiculous. It's a game changer. It's a big game changer because it really doesn't level the playing field anymore because you have it to where the world government had three central powers or there were three central powers within the world you had the admirals the warlords and the emperors and obviously the revolutionaries are kind of like a weird third party kind of like out of nowhere that could really disrupt the flow but still there was a perfect balance between the three and now with the warlord system being dismantled that means that the old warlords might try to join a pirate crew or create their own pirate crews which i think many of the emperors or other individuals would pick them up and have them fall under their command which could lead to what blackbeard was talking about either a he was talking about picking up let's say individuals like you know the warlords that are under attack and having them join his crew or gaining their devil fruits or going after sabo that's injured to get him on his crew or to go to pluton that is an Alabasta that was revealed. One of those things are potentially happening with Blackbeard. But in my assumption, I do believe a lot of Warlords are about to have a nice shift and probably join a lot of different crews. I can definitely see Boa Hancock maybe even joining the Straw Hat fleet because it would make sense. And I can definitely see someone like Mihawk as well maybe joining later on in the future even joining Shanks since he does respect Shanks quite a bit. Now that would be interesting. Which, by the way, talking about the individual Warlords and what's going on, obviously... Hawkeye, he's someone that is incredibly strong. I don't think he's going to have any issues whatsoever. The man has ripped apart boats with, you know, his sword cuts. He's cut a tsunami with his, you know, sword. He is not someone you, you know, you underestimate. So because of that, I think he's going to be fine, obviously. Because he is the final fight for Zoro. And I think that... No matter what the military throws at him, they're really just going to get destroyed. There's no amount of God that can save them, honestly. They would need to bring all the admirals probably to bring him down because of how strong Hawkeye really is. He's definitely really high up there in power. Now, Boa Hancock, she's very interesting as well because 
we have had a really long relationship with her as a character. She is someone that has been around a lot. She has definitely helped Luffy out in critical moments within the story. And I think because of that, nothing really bad is going to happen to her. But I could definitely see Luffy somehow finding out something happened and trying to save her. Or she joins Luffy and joins his fleet. Whatever the case may be though, I do think that she's not going to be captured. Because Kobe is probably going to find out about Boa Hancock's relationship with Luffy. And I could definitely see them kind of fangasming about the fact that they're both fans of Luffy. So that's potentially going to happen. But it does make, you know, Amazon Lily in a very tough spot because the reason why the Warlord was very important for them, like Boa Hancock, was because it protected them. It protected them from, you know, being attacked by, you know, the uh, people being, you know, uh, attacked by other individuals, other pirate crews, etc. It really helped them out. And because of that, they were able to have free reign. And with that status gone, it really makes Amazon Lily in a really bad spot. And so they definitely need protection. Now, another thing, too, is Buggy. Buggy, obviously, he's going to be A-OK -okay because, I mean, the man has a large crew, very large crew, scary crew, a lot of people from Impel Down that is way stronger than him. And so I believe he's going to be able to get out A-OK -okay and probably even join up with Shanks. I could definitely see something like that happening. If not joining up with Shanks, maybe Blackbeard, something might happen. But I definitely see Buggy, you know, potentially getting out A-OK -okay and being fine. Which also leads into the next point. We also have Drake. Drake is a big twist within the chapter. For a long time now, many have wondered, who is Drake? Like, is he really on the government side? Is he on Kaido's side, etc.? And it's officially revealed that he is a double agent. He is actually working against Kaido, feeding information to the government, and that's what he's been doing. And so, Kobe was learning more about what was happening within Wano, about Luffy, etc., but also about the relationship that Big Mom and Kaido has, and that they have now formed a pirate alliance, which is incredibly scary, especially with the shift within the world right now with the warlords being dismantled it makes the pirate alliance of someone like big mom and kaido very dangerous because they can really do a lot of damage to the world now if they really combine both of their forces so it's scary so yeah there's a lot that happens within this chapter i i honestly am just amazed by how much oda crammed within this chapter with just the amount of pages he had. There's just so much information to really process, and I can't wait to see what's really going to happen in the next chapter. But I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts and comments below. I'm uh, very sorry about the delays in the One Piece reviews. I'm back. I'm planning on reviewing the chapters once again every single week. Like I said, I apologize, but here I am back on the horse to do reviews, and once again, I apologize. So, um, if you enjoy my content, you know, subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like, and if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below, because for some reason, even if you click the subscribe button, you don't always get notified, so if you want to get notified, hit that bell icon, and with that, Chibi out.